So boys and girls, as you know, we've been doing this charity marathon for how many hours? I don't know how many hours we've been doing this charity marathon, but I've got a very, very special guest. We're doing something a little bit different because, hey, this whole process has been different. We're the first ones to do a charity marathon podcast, and here we have my friend from Nudrum Sports, Ebs. How you doing, my guy? You good? Yeah, we're all good, man. How's it going? Yeah, all good. Always a pleasure. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you on, my guy. How's things? Yeah, all good, man. Always a pleasure to, like I said, speak to you. Um happy to help you where we can man so for sure fantastic man i appreciate your time and just for the benefit of our viewers ebbs is the chairman ceo what would you say you are what's your job well, title man? The, the official title is founder and ceo but um okay You're i guess CEO. i'm but i do i do anything really i do everything here so there you go so nudrum sports um, it's a very, very popular charity organization in, in the UK. You've got charters with various clubs or agreements with various clubs uh, across the UK, across Europe as well. And as people are aware, there are a lot of Muslim players playing in Cyprus, very uh, successful ones at that. And I think we'd just like to see what Nujum do because it's a very popular uh, organization, as I said, and you offer a lot of support for Muslim players throughout Europe, especially in the UK. So can you just give us a breakdown as to what you guys do, your day-to-day -day job, how you support these players, and also clubs that you're you're working alongside? Yeah, sure, man. So we're a not-for-profit um, registered in the UK, supporting Muslim athletes in professional sports. So not just football, you work across about four or five different sports now. Um, we've got 12 ambassadors um, in sport. Um, in football, we have Adama Traore, Sam Morsi, Hamza Chowdhury, um, Adi Yusuf and Tofi Kalumawewe. Uh, so these five boys, we've got 12 in total. We've got a few in cricket, a few in boxing, one in horse riding as well. Um, in terms of our roles in sport, we currently the advisors to the English Cricket Board, the Rugby League Board, uh, Rugby League uh, Federation, uh, the PGMOL, which is the official referees body in the UK that manages all the referees in the Premier League. Um, we're also the advisors to the ITIA now, soon. Not soon. It's been announced actually last week. Uh, or the Congratulations. The Ritzy Association. Thank you. Um, and our Muslim athlete charter, as you alluded to, there has been signed by over 100 clubs, um, eight in the Premier League, um, loads in the Championship, League One, League Two, National League, Cricket, Rugby League, uh, governing bodies, um, county FAs. Uh, it's just a, a framework to support them, uh, support Muslim athletes within their organisations, basically. And have you worked with many clubs abroad? Because I know you, you had a meeting with the Dutch FA, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so we've started to take baby steps into Europe now. So, we've, yeah, like you mentioned, we've, we've started to work with the KNVB, the Dutch uh, Football Association. Uh, we've got links to a few clubs within Europe, like Circular Bruges, with our uh, good ad our advisor, uh, Radhi Jaidi. Radhi Jaidi, yeah. Uh, he's the assistant manager there. So, we've just started comms with their, with their team and... We've started to work quite um, quite substantially now in, in Switzerland with, with a lot of the Swiss bass players. Um, and we have actually an iftar there um, this year as well uh, with the players, which is kind of unique. We do the London one and Switzerland one as well. So, uh, yeah, we're taking baby steps as well, I guess, into Europe. Well, this is it. And I know a few people, when I, when I told them about what we're doing with this podcast, some people were a little bit, mm, you know, this is Cyprus and we're very you know, Greek Orthodox in our, in our religion and obviously another religion to come in, whether it be Muslim or whether it be another religion, people are still a little bit funny about it and I understand the mentality. But in terms of the challenges that you have or as a charity have going into these nations that are predominantly, you know, Catholic or Christian based, what are the obstacles that you guys come across when it comes to this? Um. To be fair, we're talking about obstacles. I think obviously, like anything, in terms of like obstacles, right? We, we get. I don't want to be sort of too negative, right? Mm. I think like in terms of, for me, I try and be positive, and we try and always find the uh, go above, um, so sort of, uh, beyond the obstacle, right? And try and find solutions for it. Um, sometimes we, um, 
hesitation maybe a, a key mm. one um i think obviously uh, everything that happens in, in in the news and stuff sometimes we have to but i think we've gone beyond that point now because of our i guess our roles in sport and and the clubs that we work with and the players that we have and the ambassadors that we work with our bread and butter is to work with the players uh, this is why we started we didn't um we didn't operate or we didn't start our, our organization to work with the clubs it was to support the players and yeah. the, the clubs and the leagues was secondary and sort of kind of i guess um accidentally jumped into it um to support them um but i think in 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 totality like i think clubs are really good um, a lot of clubs are good um but uh, as always like they can improve we can all improve as well even ourselves so Oh, for sure. And you, you do have a lot of ignorance out there, which, again, you, is, is part and parcel of the, the world, unfortunately. But you guys offer the support and the guidance, but also you mentor the players. So yeah. whether it be, um, I don't know, professional counselling or faith advice, it's not as if you just go in there and you talk to the FA and you say, right, we're taking over now. We're going to do this and yeah, that. Yeah. No, you, you're, you're effectively giving that support for the players. Because as I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of Muslim players in Cyprus and I, I can't remember the last, I, I don't even remember ever seeing a, a mosque in the south of Cyprus. Yeah. So, again, I'm people say to me, so I, can't, I can't say. Well, this is it. So, like, there might be people saying to me, well, there are mosques because they're, they're, there's the Turkish Syriac community somewhere. So, but I haven't seen it myself. But obviously, you, you'd go, go into Cyprus and let's say, for example, you have a Muslim player that would say to you, Ebs, what support can you give me? What is it that you would do for the player? So sometimes that like, Muslim players have a lot of questions that can't be answered by a person who doesn't understand the faith. Right. From, for example, um, like players' union, like a, yeah, players' union won't have an answer because they won't know the Islamic side of it. For example, like I mean, clubs have reached out as an example. Like obviously, was, we have something called the Digs in the UK, right? Which is academy where yeah. players from the academy stay in, and and the clubs provide that accommodation and, and food and host families. Sometimes these host families don't nothing know nothing about the halal food. Sometimes they, for example, dogs. Right? I'm not sure if you're aware or your viewers are aware that dogs, for example, uh, dogs are fine in, in in the religion, but the saliva of the dog we see as impure. So, for example, if the saliva was to touch me, I'd have to have a shower. If the saliva was to um, fall on somewhere where we pray, we'd have to clean that before we can pray. So that that was one of the issues. I mean, lots of other things, like right? you know, Islamic questions, like. You know, I'm struggling with my religion, my prayers. How do I pray? How do I give charity? Um, um, so these sort of things, as, as an example, we are we've set up for Ramadan a WhatsApp group where players of all um, all um, levels of football in the UK, from the Premier League down to even the National League, um, they have an opportunity for a 15-minute Quran lesson to read the Quran with with someone from the Jum. Um, and again, that's never been done before as well. So these sort of things that we can provide, we do provide. Is it, uh, can you do this online with them as well? Because obviously the distance, you being based in the UK and your people, versus, you know, representatives being based in the UK are not in Cyprus. So is this something that you guys can do on Zoom or is it just a conversation that you guys have with them? So obviously when they're UK based, like we, a lot of the players um, are with us uh, on the phone, WhatsApp. WhatsApp is, is the main form of communication. And in terms of the Quran lessons on Zoom, yeah. Um, so... But yeah, we do. These are sort of a tiny um, insight into what we do and provide for the players. We do, we provide loads of other things from even small gatherings, um, our athlete meetups, which I have every quarter. I think so you've been to a few as well, still. Yeah, uh, seen how they are, um, and obviously we provide. Aside from that as well, like we will also meet up with them, um, like in terms of like maybe three or four players living in West London. Uh, yeah. We, and Jamil, our director of comedy, might go for dinner with them. You know, things like that we do. And that means a lot to them, you know. The thing is, when I came to your first event, I didn't know what to expect, to be honest. Um, but it was in Canary Wharf. It was in a lovely little office building. Um, there was a good turnout. There were footballers there, other sportsmen, females as well. Um, obviously, I learned a, a, a lot well I say a lot I say a little bit because your you know, religion is massive so you can't learn everything but I learned a lot of what you guys are trying to do in terms of the connection between yourselves and the players but also learned about the culture 
And I think this is the other thing because, you know, me, I've been to Dubai on numerous occasions. I've been part of Muslim countries I've, I've been to. So I kind of understand. And I've got Muslim friends. Sorry to sound like the, oh, I've got, I've got Muslim friends, so I've got to be racist. <laughs> but do you get what I'm saying? So I've, I've kind of immersed myself in that and I understand it. But I think when I went to that first event, I thought, do you know what? This is really good. But it's an opportunity to network and meet new people, not just to understand the culture, but also meet new people that are involved in what you guys are doing. And as you mentioned, you work with ECB, rugby. What other um, industries would you say are you working alongside? Because it isn't just sports, is it? Um, when you say industries, do you want to like... Well, I know there are, for example, my boss, Mustafa, is, is a sports lawyer. So are there other people within certain industries that you support? Or yeah, you I mean, alongside? sometimes, obviously, you get so many different questions. Players always need help with so many different things, right? They're struggling with, mm. you know, contracts. They're struggling with um, their clubs. So sometimes they, they'll ask us to sort of support them with that. Um, so, yeah, like you said, sometimes I'll reach out to you and say, still, do you know someone at FIFA or do you know someone at FIFA Pro? Yeah. Uh, and you'll be like, yeah, I know someone. Um, and then, yeah, so it's that network there, right? Um Obviously, sporting network, and you're right. Other sectors is important as well: legal, uh, marketing, commercial. I know you've done some uh, marketing, commercial stuff with a lot of the players as well. Um, so things like that, basically, we can support them with or point them in the right direction. Signposting, I guess. Mm. I see you guys have got a big social media presence. There's a lot of uh, content that goes out. Yeah, you do. You I do. Know, I've mate. seen it on Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, or X, as it's called. I've I've seen the posts. I mean, you recently sent a package out to some players at Milan. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, no, nah, obviously our social media content team, they do an excellent job. Um, they're actually based in uh, Europe as well. So they're based in Switzerland. So they do a lot of remote working. And it's yeah. excellent that, um, like I said, we started four years ago now. And, I mean, we were literally, not we, it was just me, right? Um and um, it was an idea and I, I i had no clue what we wanted to do right and i don't really speak about this too often because i don't want to make it about me because it's not about me um, mm. but um to have six members of staff now um advisors to four sporting bodies 100 clubs signed up to our charter 12 ambassadors two special advisors troy Townsend and Radhi jaidi as well part of our board and our leadership team um being in an office like this, you can see some of the some of the shirts that we have. Um, I prefer the jacket, to be honest. I prefer the jacket. <laughs> so loads of shirts. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a journey, and I don't know how long it's going to continue, right? But at least, like, even if well, if I was to switch off the light, I'm not saying we are, but I'm saying if I, even if I was to switch off the light tonight, I know that I will be. Um, I would have done as much as I can to support these mm -hmm. boys and girls in the UK with, with, with their faith, right? And I could um, oh, retire happily. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, I remember going, coming to the one at Leighton Orient, the event that you held. Last year. I mean, yeah. how, many, how many people were there? Got to be over 200. Got to be over that. Yeah, about 150. 100, maybe 100, 120 to 150. Something like that. And do you know, it was a fantastic event because you got to speak to people not just Muslim players, Muslim athletes, or people that work in, in, in certain industries, but it, it was a very welcoming event. And it wasn't just, as I say, it wasn't just for Muslims. There were Christian people then, et cetera. And you could just tell that there was a positive vibe about it and people wanted to learn and also network. Because we don't, that's what... because don't forget, we don't, um... so I'm trying to say is that we've, although we've set up to support Muslim athletes, right? In the elite professional environment, and this is this goes across the board for non-Muslims as well, there isn't a setup where they can be themselves. There isn't a support organization that says, hey, come in, we'll take you in, right? Forget everything that you're doing, right? Whether you think it's bad or good, we're here for you, right? And that's how I've been brought up in East London, right? Is mm. that we don't kick someone when they're down, we pick them up, right? And in football or in sport in general, sometimes that environment isn't available for not just Muslims, for non-Muslims as well, uh, regardless of their background. And a lot of the players that we work with, Muslim players, they have friends who are non-Muslim and they see this, right? They see it, hold yeah. on. Why is this bold guy from East London, right? Giving, could be, I could, could be speaking about either of us, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I got my cap on. <laughs> 
But uh, why is why is this guy from East London giving these random players that he has nothing to do with that doesn't know them just gift packs, Ramadan packs that we do every year? Why is he? Why are they doing these events for these players? Right? It, you ask the question. Yeah. Um, so we welcome anyone and everyone. Obviously, you're not Muslim as well, still, and you know we're more than welcome in any of our events, right? And you know that as well. So, um, and that's what we try to create and a nurturing environment that is closed. Like, don't don't get it wrong. Like, we don't get we don't we're not opening it up to the public. No one from the public comes. It's closed environment, but it's open if that makes sense. Open for the yeah. people. Be yourself, yeah. right? So, yeah. Put this way, it's, it's it's a by invitation only thing, but yeah. you know you you're not gonna t turn down people that want to come and be educated yeah. or want to learn exactly. what you guys. No, nah, no, nah, exactly. Know? And we've we've worked with, you know, we've worked with um, since our time open up. I mean, we've worked with quite a few people that are, let's just say, like you know, they need education. So yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Well, I know you, you're working alongside Kick It Out. You mentioned Troy Troy Townsend, whose son Andros is half Cypriot. So there's a, there's a connection there. <laughs> yeah. So um, there you go. Sure. And uh, so, so what's, what's it been like working with Kick Out anyway? What support have you I mean, given obviously them we work, and vice versa? I mean, obviously we work with Troy and Mamoon. So Troy and Mamoon, they basically, so to give your viewers an understanding, uh, in the UK, um, Troy and Mamoon are from the player engagement team at Kick Out, which is the uh, official anti-racism discrimination body in football. So if there's any issues with anti-racism and discrimination in football, it get, gets referred to kick it out. Troy and Mamoon deliver um, sessions to all the players from the first team to the academy on, on racism and discrimination basically throughout the year. Um, so it's been a joy to work with them. Obviously, Troy is part of our leadership team. He's our advisor. Mamoon as well works with us closely. I mean, we deliver as well to academy. So that's one part of the work that we haven't spoken about. We deliver education on Ramadan and Islamophobia to players of a Muslim and a non-Muslim background and staff as well. When we're at sessions, um, sometimes players will come to me and say, yeah, I'm having issues regarding this, this, this. And I'll say, well, have you heard of Troy? And vice versa, when Troy is at sessions and you meet some young Muslim boys who uh, we don't know about Najum, we introduce them to Najum. Mm. Um, and it's been a joy to work with them both, right? And I think, um, yeah, and his son, obviously, his quality as well. Like, um, the, the, the Troy is like an uncle to me, right? And yeah, I can't speak it high enough of, of them. So, brilliant, brilliant. So, what is the long term vision for Nujum? Because how many years deep are you now? Four years now. Four, About years, four years, yeah. About four years. When you say long term vision, I'll be honest with you, I'll give you a straightforward answer. I don't know because. Right. Genuinely, like when we when we launched in uh, 2020, um, we had no idea we were going to do this. Like literally, no idea. So I don't know what the long term vision is. Long term vision is obviously um, something that we we uh, I can't, yeah we we have a five year plan, ten year plan, all of that stuff. Yeah. But how that uh, immerses itself into being, I don't I don't know. I don't know how what that looks like. To be honest with you, we want to be in Europe. We want to work in Cyprus. We want to work in everywhere in Europe to support the players. Every country in in Europe for sure. That's one thing I can tell you, hundred percent. So, I, I want to ask you about one of your ambassadors, and I know obviously you don't want to mention too much about them and talk about them, but uh, Adama Traore, player for Fulham, was at Wolves previously at Villa, Middlesbrough, and Barcelona, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Right. Does it? Do you sometimes take a uh, stand back and say, wow, we've done so much over a four-year period knowing that we've got the attention of someone of that caliber? Do you get what I'm saying? Does it does it strike you sometimes thinking, wow, like how much have we done? Like you don't realize how much work you put in. I, I don't. Like I'll be honest with you. Like for me, uh, complacency is my biggest fear. I'm very, um, very worried about being complacent. So for us at Nujum, when we do something big or small, for us, the next hour after it goes live is, okay, what are we doing next? Right. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, like I said, I, when you said we've got a profile on social media, I don't see it that way because for me, we can always be bigger and better. Um, I mean, in terms of the content that you deliver, I mean, you yeah. get the message across. So Yeah, no, nah, 100% we do, but we can, I think we can always be better as well. I think we can do a lot better. Uh, in my opinion, and complacency is very, it's something that I go home sometimes and I, I uh, yeah, I can't be complacent. I could be okay. sitting with Ronaldo one day um, or, or, or Messi and I'll be like, okay, what are we doing next? Because that's, yeah, because you can't be complacent. Yeah, I mean, for sure. Yeah. For sure. You're, you're like me in the sense that your mind constantly works. Yeah. Non-stop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
Brilliant. Well, mate, you mentioned you'd like to, uh, you know, go to Cyprus and, and speak to some of the players. Is this something that is in motion or do you not have the right people to speak to? Are you aware of what's what the culture is like and everything? Well, obviously, that's where I'm being guided by you, right? Um, trying yeah. to get a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, in terms of it's a complete new, different country. I haven't been to Cyprus. I'd love to visit. Um I've spoken to a few players who played there. Um but yeah, let's see what the future holds. I think we might be might be going there sooner than later. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Well look, Ebs, thank you for joining me. Uh, no, I'm gonna put no. the link in the description to Najum, to all the socials, everything. And uh that's it. Any any messages you want to give to the, the players no, out, out there? No, it's just Ramadan Mubarak, man, if they're listening to this. Um and um hopefully, yeah, keep up the Keep up your keep up striving, right? Always um, be yourself. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you.